what are the best cars to get as your first car? It's a really hard decision to make and I've made some mistakes or one mistake you only get a first car once. These are my top five favourite first cars and I'd recommend them to anybody. I don't care who you are. If you're in the UK and you need a first car, you want it under five grand, this is what I'd recommend. Let's do this. So I'm an auto trader. Let's do a budget of five grand. I think that's a healthy budget. You may not even need to spend that. I would never spend any more. And I would never get a brand new car either. Even though I did that, learn from my mistake, it's not worth it. Get something used. We are going to put in here. So we've got five grand here is the max. That's how much you want to spend up to. I am going to put the mileage in at up to 50,000 miles just because the car's going to be newer it's going to have less things that need to be done oh my goodness look at this it's a g-wiz some crazy stuff on here so then i would go to cat s c d n we don't want to do that you want a clear hpi check that's important you want to know the car's not been in a crash it's not been badly damaged it's not been written off you don't really want to inherit somebody else's problem. As good as they can look on the outside, internally there can be issues that you've then got to fork out for later down the line. Don't recommend. So we are now, hopefully, H HBI clear. In add keywords, I always put in full service history because you want a car that's been looked after and properly maintained. You want to keep this car as cheap to run as possible. First time drivers are always going to be paying a lot in insurance. You can't get away from that. But everything ties in. It's not just can I afford this car, it's can I afford all of this stuff. So the car, the fuel, the maintenance, the other fluids that it may need, can you afford it all? And insurance is part of that and a big part of that, but you've also got to look at the full picture. So I always want to do annual tax quite low. I'd always do up to 30 quid for your first car. You want to keep it as cheap as possible. Insurance group is obviously about insurance. You want insurance group 10 or under. They're the cheapest insurance groups. But for me, my opinion, you want something that's even less than that. So I go up to 05 for your first car. And that's just my opinion. That's usually going to be something that's one litre, small engine, but it's cheap to run. It's going to be cheaper to insure too. So then we're going to go to, obviously you're gonna have to choose the gearbox type that you want. I think you're gonna struggle to find many automatics as you can see, most cheaper cars, first cars are manual. But if you've only got an automatic license, obviously you can only look at automatic. Basically, if you wanna change your own gears, great, that's cheaper. If you don't, then it's gonna be more expensive. I'm always going to go to private and trade and go to trade. Trade gives you more protections as a buyer. Whereas privately selling, not to poo-poo people who sell privately, but it's just they're usually sold as seen and you've got less buyer protections. And I think it's really important. You're spending, I mean, five grand's a lot of money, two grand's a lot of money, a grand's a lot of money. You're relying on this car to get from A to B. You want to know that it's sound. And if something's wrong with it, you can go back to a company and say, hang on, can you do something about this? Much harder with a private person. So let's see what we're playing with here. We're gonna go. The, we're gonna go. The age, the newest first. Newer cars are usually cheaper to insure because they've got more safety features as standard. And um, here is one of my favourite cars as a first car: Peugeot 107. Great car, cheap to run, looks cute if you're bothered about cuteness. But it's small, it's compact, easy to drive, easy to manoeuvre, and it's cheap all round. Really, that's ideal. And this is low mileage. Nice colour if you if you like purple. What I always do is I will open several tabs of different cars that are the same and then I can compare things like the specifications, so the packs that it's got, the features that it comes with, what miles it's got, and I can just weigh up if that's the right amount of money to be paying for that car. You always want the best deal. Another tip, always haggle. I never, never go to buy something used and don't try and offer a bit of a deal. I mean, the worst they can say is no. Suzuki Alta is another fantastic small car for a first car. 4Ks are good, but I'd rather have a Citroen C1. Now, these two, as you can see, are very similar. That's because they're the same car, practically, just a different badge different colours. So a C1 is another car I would highly recommend. So we've got a Peugeot 107, we've got a Citroen C1, we like those so far. A Fiat 500 is a good car, but I don't think that they're as reliable as a Citroen C1 or a Peugeot 107, in my opinion, just from what I've seen. Kia Picanto is a great first car. Kia are really reliable. That's got 45,000 miles, which is decent. It's got a lot of life left in that engine. Hyundai i20, another great car. Hyundai own Kia. Everything they make is usually reliable as long as it's been looked after. That's really important. So the KAs are nice cars, but I just would prefer these other ones that we're seeing just because of reliability, really. Okay, can you see we're seeing some more Suzuki Altos? They're good cars. 
and a really good feature on AutoTrader actually. So you can see what buyers have said about this particular car and that particular year. Always good to check this because an owner's review is the best review. So this has got a really decent review and you can see all the different ones. You can see when they were posted and that shows they're reliable cars and, and someone's happy with them and it's that year. That's what's important, is it that year? Because a lot of new car reviews have got nothing to do with the previous car because they've changed things like the engine and the gearbox. That's a decent first car, in my opinion. Obviously, the cheaper, the better, but sometimes it's worth paying, well, all the time, it's worth paying extra to have a newer car, one that's been looked after better, because then it's going to last you longer. What else have we got here? More 107s, they're great. And Suzuki Altos, they're wicked first cars, honestly, and Citroen C1s. Now, I would like to see Chevrolet Spark is good. That's got really low miles. Let's have a little look. Quite basic inside. A lot of them are going to be around this price, especially for low miles. They're always writing capital letters like they're shouting. £30 a year car tax. Like, all right, all right, Dell, chill. <laughs> chill out, Dell. Drives fantastic. Yeah, they're always going to say that stuff. Always make sure that you go see it yourself. Drive it yourself. Take somebody with you that, that's driven a while and knows what is right and wrong in a car. We don't all have access to engineers and mechanics. If you do, great. If you don't, just take somebody with you that knows a bit about cars. Another thing I'm going to say is, although that it says that it does have um, things like MOTs and services, always double check that. If you like a car enough to go see it, ask to see that information and always cross-reference it. So have they got any receipts? That'd be good if they've got receipts. Okay, this one doesn't have as much of a good review. Let's check out why. Revo, it's quite high and Australia, not so much. But you can go through these and have a look. Somebody's talked about a higher car. Well, that's completely different really to, to having it for an everyday car and as a first car because a higher car is just something that you are going to drive for a small period of time. You may have completely different needs. A lot of people get smaller cars as a higher car because they're cheaper. Doesn't mean that it's not going to be right for you. So just something to bear in mind. So, so far we have the Suzuki Alto. I would highly recommend this one. They all look quite similar. Nice little go faster stripes there for you. But yeah, that's a cute, a cute version of the car. Again, basic, but you've got your cup holders there. Got some sort of infotainment, but not really infotainment. It's just a, a normal radio CD player. It's been a while since I've seen one of them. Six speak. Okay, it's got heaters, electric front windows. That'd be good. Isofix, if you've got kiddies or if you ever have kiddies in your car. Radio. Okay, so if you needed something like Bluetooth, this probably isn't going to be the car for you. But you can always get little things that you can insert into your car that make it Bluetooth compatible. The Peugeot 107, I'll show you around this one. I think that's a really good clean example from what I can see on the pictures. Again, this one doesn't have much in the way of, you know, techie creature comforts, but you don't need loads of stuff, loads of kits. It, it, it's not important. And you can always buy cheap little things from home baggins. You can buy like heated seat covers. You can buy a heated steering wheel covers. You can buy things that do Bluetooth for your phone. This usually they will have aux. It doesn't have to be amazing. I mean, look at the in-betweeners, what they had as their first car. Really? Really? It does, however, have uh, tinted windows. Very nice. And it's a, it's a cute colour. Citroen C1. There's lots of these online. You're never going to be in danger of finding one of these that's, that's manual. Cute colour, Tiffany blue. It's not actually called that, but that's just what it reminds me of. Okay, this one's got free road tax. Perfect. So this is going to be really cheap to run. That's what you want. Free owners. It's a 14 plate. Again, it doesn't have much in the way of kit. But remember, this is your first car. What's important is the car's cheap to run, cheap to tax, cheap to insure. And it's something you can get used to being on the road in and you feel comfortable in. You want something that's easy to manoeuvre. You don't want to be too bothered if you scrape a little, a little bit, which does happen. It's fine to have something as a starter car. And then when you get more confident, when your insurance comes down a little bit, then you can look at the CLA or the A3 or anything like that. That's just my advice. Okay, so we've also got the Hyundai i20, which is a great car. Not even necessarily as a first car, but a run around. Again, it's small, but cute. Quite basic inside, as you can see. This one's got a little bit more stuff going on, but that's perfect for a first car. Nice, clean example. This one's got a little bit more. This one's got Bluetooth with voice recognition. Now we're talking. It's so funny to me that people put really silly things in there, like deadlocks and trip computer. Like they just write as many things as possible to make it sound like there's so many different features, but it's just really standard stuff. So don't be fooled by that. You know, look for the stuff that you actually need, not just like the fact that it's got headlights, which it legally has to have. It's weird because on Autotrader, the, the reviews aren't as great, but if you look at Revo, where there's 
many like a gargantuan amount more reviews huge amount more reviews it's got actually a really decent score so it's good to always look at that not just look at the auto trader score we've also got the kia picanto very very similar cars again that's a one litre this one is a five door example two owners from new that's fab you don't really want more than like four five owners really in my opinion you want you want to know that someone's kept it for a while aux cable that's where you can put an aux lead into your phone and into the car and then you can play music there's always workarounds for stuff so don't let it put you off where is a toyota iger please let's have a little look i love an iger and that is a car that i highly highly recommend so i'm going to seek that one out there we go there it is the iger is a fantastic car obviously you don't have to have them in these colors they've got all different colors but this reminds me of the porsche color which is called papaya or I like to call it Iron Brew, because to me that's Iron Brew colour. But this is another clean example. Toyota Iger, the Citroen C1 and the Peugeot 107 are the same car. Okay, it's got low mileage, black tinted windows, it's got a Bluetooth kit installed. This looks like a good car. It's got two keys, that's important. So then you've got a spare key. It's got absolutely fantastic rating. So that is a car that I highly recommend. And one that I've not got yet, I've not seen yet on the list, is definitely the BW Up. That was my first car and I would always recommend that as a first car but do we have that no we don't we don't have one at the moment which is sad but the market is always changing and i will definitely do more of these videos and hopefully we can have a look out for them but in case you do decide to have a look in the future a skoda city go a say at me spell m-i-i or a vw up they're all the same car same chassis same engine they just look a tiny bit different because they've got a different badge at the front and they use the different colors and the interior looks a little bit different because of the different colors and fabrics but other than that they're the same car and they are fantastic first cars i had one of those as my my first car but i bought it brand new which was a massive mistake i'd still have that car as a first car i'd have just bought it used and i wouldn't have got higher purchase if you can try and pay with money that you've got for, for your car try and save up or try your best to put it on a zero percent credit card something like that something that's manageable financially you don't want to be paying a mortgage payment out for a car when that's most of your wage so they're the cars that i would recommend and i really hope that helps if you've got any questions about getting a first car or if there's any car that you're considering and you want my opinion on it just ask below in the comments and don't forget to like and subscribe i'll be doing a lot more videos like this like you see on tiktok but more in depth and so you can see how i actually find them and then it helps you then to be able to find cars yourself so i think that's important until next time and good luck finding your first car let me know how you get on